Good morning and thank you very much, not only for the opportunity to be part of your showcase, but also, as you said, to showcase autism. And I, you mentioned that I have some personal connection with the topic of autism, and my first connection is the 20-year-old autistic son who has taught me a lot that I am going to teach you a little bit of today. I can't avoid being a teacher even in a setting like this. And of course, thank you to those of you who will be patient with me during the spontaneous translations that you have to do for others, making our public broader. So I'm a good multiplier today and you're helping me. My topic today, as uh, you can see, <laughs> quite large indeed, is developing autistic literacies, mind reading from the outer perspective. And one of the things that I want to keep in focus, and that was already mentioned, is that this presentation is not about, mainly about the autistic mind or the autistic community, but much more about the neurotypical community. That would be those of us who have not yet been or are not autistic, who have not yet been diagnosed with autism or who are not autistic. That's what we call ourselves and some autistic people also refer to us as NTs. Um, so I will use the term neurologically typical people and that's what I will mean by that. So, I tried my best to make a connection between um, the program's title inside and outside the lab, and that is why um, I will take you to, through two steps, the inside and the outside step. But before I go to that, I do want to share a little bit of my personal background in terms of my connection with autism and the way in which I have been developing in this area. As I mentioned, um, two decades ago, I gave birth to a bouncing baby boy, and he has brought a lot of richness to my life. In the early days, for example, when he started kindergarten, I thought uh, when we had found out that he was autism, autistic, that I would find ways of um, helping him through what became a very challenging experience, especially in the school system. So I created my own material. First, I developed a handbook for him personally. This picture is on the front if you want to see it later, come close. And I'll read the title in German first. Um, Alejandro's Ferienprogramm, Ich gehe in die Schule. Lesen, lernen aus, auf Spanisch, es macht Spaß. Ein integriertes Lernprogramm zur Entwicklung von Kommunikationskompetenzen. And the English translation. Alejandro's summer program, I'm off to school. Reading Spanish is fun. An integrated competence building approach. So I thought that with this, I, he would be well armed for kindergarten. But kindergarten was very soon over and then came school. So I went around searching for material and I found this book, Teaching Children with Autism to Mind Read, a practical guide. I'll put this aside because if anybody can tell me what's a practical guide to teaching autistic people to mind read, then we need to have a conversation after. So today, my intention is to help you understand the perspective where mind reading really does make sense and that's from the outside perspective of autism or from us NTs. What does NT mean again? Exactly. Thank you very much. Neurologically typical people. You can't forget these things, otherwise you won't follow me. So, thank you very much for that. So, here is what we will do. We'll first take an inside look at the autistic perspective. So I will compare it, and as you heard from the introduction, I'm going to link this to one of my specialist areas, which is the development of intercultural communicative competence, somewhat of a foreign land that autistic people find themselves living in, living together with us, NTs. And then we have the outside perspective, which is the neurologically typical potential. And I'll look at developing literacies from a reflective approach and action-based approach. I need your help. 
in order for us to be able or to start mind reading, we need to get in touch with our own emotions because they are the starting point for connecting to others' emotions and their inside perspective. So I would like you to do me a favor. I know everybody's not sitting directly next to someone, so I, you can find somebody close enough. And I want you for just one or two minutes to talk to that person. Your while speaking task <laughs> is to tell the person which languages you speak, and you can feel free to decide um, to include a language that you speak even at A2 level. And you've got to prove it. And how do you prove it? You tell the person next to you something nice. It doesn't have to be flattery. It could just be anything pleasant. And once you're finished with that, I want you then to tell the person which countries you have visited, or it might not be outside of your com your present location, you've probably been in situations, which situations you have had a chance to use the languages you mentioned in. I'll leave this for you to see what the task is, because it's a bit multi-layered, and I'm going to give you three minutes, so take good use of it, because I'll be counting. I'm going to come around. <laughs> Just keep to make sure you all are not talking business. <laughs> Pausa. <laughs> oh, you don't have anybody to talk to. Oh, look, there's a young lady here who doesn't have anybody to talk to. You're busy. <laughs> okay. All right. And um, did you speak with someone? Uh, no. Because she doesn't have anybody ah, to talk okay. to, so I'm going to give just one extra minute just because of you all. Okay. Shall I continue? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to press this thing myself. Yes, so can I interrupt the fun you're having? It breaks my heart to end this conversation. You look like you're having much more fun with each other than with me. <laughs>
Lovely. Like a good teacher, I went around and made sure everybody had a speech partner. <laughs> so wonderful. Thank you for your engagement. This is really refreshing. Now I have a last task for you. I'm not going to um, ex overextend your patience. So now I would like you to go to using your smartphones if you have. If you don't have one, you can look with a neighbor. And I'd like you to go to www.menti.com. And once you get to that website, you will be asked to enter a code. And the code you enter is 30453509. There's a question in there for you related to the conversations you just had. And the question is, how did the way in which you managed the foreign languages you mentioned make you feel? So you mentioned visiting other countries where, or having, being in other situations where you had the chance to use your languages. Now you have to talk about the way you managed. Maybe you manage well, not so well. I'm not sure, but you can try to recall how you managed and then think of how did that make me feel? And in each one of the fields, you can enter a different adjective to express the feelings that you associate with those encounters and the way you manage the language. I love the beautiful combination of emotions you can see here. But if you look at the biggest words, which, them, which suggest that more than one person has experienced that, keep it coming wherever you are. <laughs> um, you realize that smart stands out quite prominently. And happy. Enchanté. Very nice. <laughs> Confident. Great, but there are, there's also the other side. 
unable to express myself, inadequate. Hmm. But quite interesting indeed. Now your reading comes soon. So, now that you have gotten in touch with your feelings in a situation where for most of you it seems from the word cloud, the feelings were positive, but yet some of you who might be able to identify then with the um, trip we're going to take in a little while. Now that you've gotten in touch with that, we'll try to turn the tables so that we can see another perspective, predominantly the perspective that's not always so positive. So I want to take you on a trip, on a journey to a foreign land. And for this, you need to close your eyes until I tell you to open them again. So close your eyes and enjoy a trip to a foreign country. Stellen Sie sich vor, Sie wachen plötzlich in einem fremden Land auf, in dem Ihnen nichts vertraut ist. Sie verstehen weder die Sprache der Menschen, noch können sie auf andere Art mit ihnen kommunizieren. Es gelingt ihnen trotz aller Bemühungen nicht, die Gestik und Mimik ihrer Mitmenschen zu entschlüsseln. Sie haben also keine Möglichkeit, sich effektiv mit ihrer Umgebung auszutauschen. Stellen Sie sich vor, Sie kennen die Regeln des sozialen Miteinanders Ihrer neuen Umgebung nicht und niemand erklärt sie Ihnen. Stellen Sie sich vor, dass Sie immer mehr auffallen, immer der Außenseiter sind. Die Menschen sind zunehmend verärgert darüber, dass sie die einfachsten Dinge nicht beherrschen. Man glaubt, sie wollen nicht. Man denkt, sie machen das absichtlich. Man meint, sie provozieren. Stellen Sie sich vor, dass die Menschen nur ihre Defizite sehen und beginnen, sie zu meiden. Sie wollen dazugehören, aber sie wissen nicht, wie sie das schaffen können. Sie geraten immer mehr ins Abseits und wissen sich nicht selbst zu helfen. Wie würde es Ihnen damit gehen? Wie würden Sie sich fühlen? Was würden Sie tun? Was bräuchten Sie am dringendsten? Öffnen Sie bitte jetzt für den zweiten Teil Ihre Augen. Ich lebe seit über 40 Jahren mit einer anderen Wahrnehmung. Das heißt, die Welt präsentiert sich mir auf eine andere Art und Weise. Ich habe mich viele Jahre als ein Versager gesehen und gefühlt, weil ich mich natürlich mit den Menschen um mich herum verglich. Egal, wie sehr ich mich anstrengte, ich schaffte es nie, dieses Gefühl loszuwerden. Ich war eine Fremde, ganz gleich, wo ich hinging. Erst seit 2009 weiß ich, dass diese andere Wahrnehmung Asperger-Syndrom genannt wird. Die Diagnose hat mir geholfen, meine Sicht auf mich selbst zu ändern und mir endlich auf meine Weise begegnen zu können. Im Laufe der Zeit habe ich festgestellt, dass ich sehr wohl eine Erfolgsgeschichte bin. Yes, and I would like to take you along with me as we try to discover what competence package we would need in order to make success stories of many other autistic people. I had the privilege of meeting G. Vero at a congress a few years ago and was fascinated by the humorous way in which she presented her will and her experience. And I felt that it was so important to be a multiplier because there's so much potential once autistic people are given a chance to be a real part of the society. So I looked at my specialist areas and thought, well, 
intercultural communicative competence, that does help you develop a sort of range of literacies that are quite useful for dealing with people with whom you are not familiar with or whose habits might be different. So I decided to steal a little bit of my colleague's concept of developing intercultural or interactive literacies or intercultural communicative competence. And those of you who are in intercultural communicative competence area, you might know the name Michael Byram. His model, which he created in 1997, is still going strong, despite having been critiqued, elaborated on, but it's still used as a sort of um, guiding point for teachers who are going into practice, for whom it's becoming more and more important to develop intercultural communicative competence hands-on in the classroom and not wait until they get out there and hope that only their language skills fit them for interaction. So Michael Byram in developing this competence package towards interactive literacy suggests that uh, there are a number of factors that have to be pulled into focus. I'll start with attitudes, that's my favorite actually, because attitudes on the attitudes as a skill, he suggests that we need to relativize self. In other words, we need to literally take ourselves, put ourselves outside of our normal situations and way of thinking, remove our cultural glasses, and actually acknowledge that what we experience and the way we see the world is only one parallel truth to the way other people experience and see the world. So myself, I am just one among very many others who have a specific worldview. And all these worldviews, mine and all others included, are equally valid. He suggests that as a skill, attitude also means that you are willing, that you want to, that you're curious, and that you go out of your way even to want to understand and know more about the way others might think or they might understand the world. And in that way, you are actually valuing others just as you value yourself. On the other side of the model, he talks about knowledge, not just as facts and figures, but understanding not just other people and their habits, but reflecting on oneself and one's own habits and understanding how these might relate to each other in positive or negative ways. And of course, of these, the interaction among people, among people within my community, whatever that community might be, I'm not talking about nationality or nation here, but any community I identify with, and the interaction among other communities or within those communities, and how these might collide or come together. That kind of understanding. This is part of the competence package that he offers. And he also suggests that there are certain skills that need to come together with that. For example, the skill of interpreting and relating, in which one is able to observe a situation and read the situation. So one is able to anticipate that this means, oh, here, this might be a misunderstanding, or this is a stereotype. This can't possibly cover every person in this community. So being able to interpret that, relate to it, and even mediate on behalf of, based on your knowledge, that's a skill that he says is definitely part and package of this competence. Then he suggests there needs to be a bit of discovery and or interaction. So when one is not sure about something, one should research. And here he's not referring to going on, googling it. He's referring to observing, using different documents, 
looking at the way the society presents itself tr through the media, through literature, through caricatures in newspapers, asking questions, not only to people who have had experience within a certain community, but the members of that community themselves. And all of this, he suggests, leads to a critical awareness where at the center, and this is where the education comes in, we are fitting learners or future citizens for being able to make political decisions, not select political parties, but stand together with other communities and work in the interest of our common good and see that we are part of a larger community and not just our isolated nation, accept that and be able to make decisions that might reject previously held notions of the way things should be done. I like Byram. I'm not preaching him today, but I think that that's a nice way of putting together what might simply result in sufficient openness to lead to action. And so I sort of stole Byram's idea and I made up my own competence package. His was for developing interactive literacies and mine is for developing artistic literacies from the outside perspective. So we are the ones developing these literacies to surround and embrace. And if you really want to get to inclusion, this is what this means, intertwine or intermingle the autistic um, community with the community of NTs. Yes, you remember, very good. I can, me I can read minds and this is what I'm taking you into. Mind reading. The symbol I have in the middle is the symbol, a universal symbol of autism used by the autistic community. Some of you might be familiar with the puzzle piece. My son explained to me that I should not show you any puzzle piece because that is, they're not part of any puzzle. They have an infinite amount of potential and this potential should be sourced and used. Now I'm talking a lot of theory but let's get down to and lead into what this looks like in practical terms. So today you're really getting a practical guide. Um, to facilitate mind reading from an outside perspective, one of the first levels that's necessary in this competence package is some measure of reflection, anticipating, hypothesizing, and this can then lead to the first step to test the waters. That means try it out. What do I anticipate might be needed here? What might I be able to say that might be appropriate and try it out in a cautious way? And then seek confirmation, look for responses or reactions that might suggest that was a good thing to say or do. And then probably um, observe whether that brings further results. And then the last step would be then reacting by following cues, making your actions based on what you have observed, what has been confirmed, what you have tested, and probably imitating to a certain extent the kind of reaction that you observed. So shadowing or following on from the cues. And this is not just a downward process in my view. It requires a constant circular movement. I have tried my best to visualize this, but only in two directions. But I see this as being just like the infinity symbol with an endless combination of possibilities leading to the type of interaction that gives and puts autistic people in their right place at the center of our society. It would only be fair after having said all of this for me to give you some 
concrete ideas about what we can actually do. So, concrete terms. I see the model that I am starting to develop as having two levels, ref a reflective level and an action-based level. And I thought that at the reflective level, some concrete questions that we can ask ourselves when we encounter autistic people or when we have to engage with autistic people would be to, for example, which needs underlie specific actions or reactions. Normally, when one sees an action, behind it is obviously a need or at least a form of expressing something else that the action that has nothing specifically to do with the action. And those of us who, of, who have children and probably did some of those courses like Triple P, how to raise teenagers, things like that. You did that too? Okay. Um, then you would know that needs are behind a lot of actions that we might associate with bad behavior. But understanding or at least being willing to, to accept and to think about what might be behind the action is a first concrete step. Another question we can ask ourselves is which personal or professional skills that I possess can be employed in which situations? For example, if I have a special area of focus like intercultural communicative competence, what do I know from my professional field or from my per personal experience that can help me to deal with the situation? So interdisciplinary use of skills. Another question that I think would be worth formulating is which lessons previously learned can apply in new situations? If you do something right and it's nice, then you do it twice. And another, the final question that I've formulated for us to think about in our encounters with autistic people would be, which form of expression can be likely to reduce overload? And this leads directly into the action-based level of the model. What do we do? I'm going to go through the list and I'm going to give you examples from maybe the school context or from the home context or from the relationship context. The first one is expressing requests, information, and so on in clear, concrete, and simple terms. Uh, this one is easy for me. Um, for example, as a mother, I will not say, hmm, the garbage is full. Now, if I say that to my daughter, she might say, hmm, I guess I'm supposed to throw it out. My son would not budge because I haven't said anything to him. Then I say to him, Alejandro, please throw out the garbage, both the paper and the plastic, by 6.30 this afternoon, which is the time I will be back. Got it? Sincere, because that's really what I need. I am not trying to, we call it, patronize him or make him make things overly simple, but it's clear, it's concrete, and he can work with that. And so when I come back to him later on in the day, there is no confusion about what he should have done. It doesn't mean he will have done it, but he knew exactly what he was supposed to do. Um, then we have the exam the, the, the another action, proposing or negotiating a plan or structure. Let's think of a classroom setting. Um, an autistic student sits at the front and has been given the instructions of the next task, but doesn't respond. The task probably isn't very stimulating, or there's probably no particular um, clarity that would lead the student to work. So a teacher can approach the child and say, um, there are two things we can do. You can do this task, or you can create this task, in which the second task would be something that might be something that falls in line with the autistic child's special interests. Shall we do this task or this task? And if there's difficulty making a choice, can I suggest that you start with this? You might enjoy this. Do you think you want to do this? So a negotiation or a sort of coming 
meeting the autistic child halfway by presenting a plan or structure and sort of negotiating that um, is one possible way of acting in a way that incorporates and demonstrates a certain level of autistic competence from the outside perspective, from the perspective of the entities. Giving and asking for feedback. Um, sometimes autistic people might appear to, be, to not be present, but they might be far more present than you might think. And simply asking, is this fine? Or, you've done well. Um, can we do this again next Tuesday? Specific, concrete, clear, ask for feedback, give feedback, negotiate a plan, structure. You see the infinite combination of a competence package for working with autistic people. Creating opportunities for involvement, deliberately orchestrating or organizing events, tasks that give autistic people an opportunity to shine in their area, or that at least give them an entry point into interaction is the best thing that we can do. And the final point, replicating successful actions, like I said, if it's nice, we do it twice. That's all that means. Now, I have, again, I have stolen from Dr. Christina Preisman, who herself is a medical doctor, an Asperger syndrome person, and she's also a psychotherapist. And she wrote a book, and you'll see it in my references. And this book um, gives a lot of autistic people the opportunities to report on the challenges they, had in a they have on a daily basis. And she developed a checklist for working with autistic people at the workplace. And all of these points I have mentioned appear in her checklist. So, if we were to look at our model in a structure similar to Byram's model, we'll end up with a reflective level that leads eventually to successful interaction, which we should always replicate. And on both arms, we have those actions, those concrete actions that we need to pursue if we want to mind read and develop the artistic literacies that would make this world so much richer in terms of experience and in terms of the happiness that autistic people can enjoy. My reference list, I have to make a comment on it. Um, I'm, I had to give, of course, credit to Byram who inspired me. And the other two authors, I have selected them specifically and used their work because these are works written by autistic people themselves. Um, the story you heard was the first page of Vero's, uh, G's, her first name is G, Vero's book, which she brought out in, in 2014 called Autism, Meine Eine, Andere Wahrnehmung. And her story is very special because she only discovered that she was Asperger when she was already 38. She's married and she has three children. So it gave her husband, according to him, whew, now I understand everything. Um, she talks about the diagnosis being something that helped her as well to recognize her success and not to have measured herself by NT standards. And the second book I just presented to you is written by Dr. Christina Preisman, who lectures and also holds workshops to help people develop autistic literacies. Mind reading from an outside perspective. You've been great and I prepared the last slide and I promised that I would only show it if I thought it was true.
So really nice job and thank you for being the type of audience any presenter hopes for and hopefully our translators have also thought the same of me. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.